katoin peileihin, niin ne oli jo ne oli kaukana takana. Mä sanoin, että tämän parempaa starttia ei kuule ole ikinä tullut tehty. Ja niin tuli maailmasta. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are opening our fresh season with Australian Grand Prix. Let's take a look at the starting grid. At row 11 we have both Minardis, Spanish rookie Mark Genes 22nd and his partner Luke Vidoa is 21st. Right in front of them is Olivier Panis from Prost and another freshman Ricardo Zonto on BAR. Row 9th has been occupied by Eros. Spanish newcomer Pedro de la Rosa is 18th and his teammate Toro Takagi is 17th. Zalbis Gianna Lacy is 16th and Alessandro Zanari, who is making his return to Formula 1, is 15th. Another Zalba Pedro Dinis is 14th and Johnny Haberdon Stewart is 13th. Row 6 is Prostiana Trulli and 97 world champion Jacques Villeneuve. Benetton's Alexander Woods is 10th and 96 world champion Damon Hill is 9th. Williams' new driver Ralph Schumacher is 8th, Giancarlo Fisichelli is 7th. Next is Ferrari's Eddie Irvine in 6th position, Jordan's Heinz Held Fransman 5th. Rubens Barrichello managed to qualify 4th and 2 time world champion Michael Schumacher is 3rd. First row consists of two light and fast McLarens. David Kuchel is second, and reigning world champion Mick Hagner has taken the pole position. Catastrophic coincidence for Stewart. Both of their cars are human. And if Rubens Barrichello, this means that he's at least going to start at the end of grid in reserve car, then for Johnny Herbert, it's already checked flag. Second attempt to make formation lap wasn't much better. Hagenin and Schumacher had issues, but Mika managed to cross the line before the last car, so he is allowed to return to pole, but Michael will have to start from last row. Final race begins, but not even one lap passed and we are losing two more cars. Jeanne Lazy and Prost and Damon Hill and Jordan are forced to retire from the race. Lap 13 was one of the unluckiest. First, Jacques Villeneuve, who had a good opening part of the race, crashes into barrier and he's out. And then, surprisingly, David Coulthard has to quit due to gearbox issues. Safety cars on the track, and this is completely neutralizes all the advantage that Hakkinen managed to gain. But this was only the icing on the cake, as during restart McLaren isn't able to accelerate, which allows Evine and the company to overtake reigning world champion. Despite all his attempts to stay on track, Alessandro Zanardi crashes into the wall, which forces safety car to appear again. At the same lap, second McLaren is coming back to pits to peacefully retire. After marvelous qualification, complete disaster happened in the race. Team from Walking has a lot to work on before Interlagos. Both leading cars, Ivan and Franson, have simultaneously driven to the pits. Barrichello, who had all the ingredients for race to be a daylight nightmare, overtakes De La Rosa for fifth place. Even though Jordan's Heinz held Frenson was close, Eddie Evine was laser focused and didn't make any mistakes. Therefore, this debut race of the season is also Eddie's Evine made in victory in Formula 1. Phenomenal start of 1999 for Eddie. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to sum up the results of the first Grand Prix of the season. Eddie Evine has taken his maiden Formula 1 victory. Heinz Harald Frensen is second, and Ralph Schumacher has finished third. Only four other drivers managed to score some points today. Giancarlo Fisichelli is fourth, Rubens Barrichello fifth, Pedro de la Rosa sixth, Tornasuke Tokage seventh, and Michael Schumacher has finished eighth and scored the fastest slap of the race, thus gaining the extra point. And speaking about Constructors' Championship, Ferrari has taken the lead, scoring 30 points. Jordan is second with 18, and Williams is short with only 3 points behind. I've got to give a credit to Eros. Phenomenal double points finish today has allowed them to climb over Benton and Stewart, who have also gained double digits. This was Australian Grand Prix 1999. Next race is going to be almost a month later in Brazil, but don't worry, time will fly with a blink of an eye. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Interlagos, and everything is almost ready to start Brazilian Grand Prix. But before, let's check positions at the starting grid. Don't be surprised, it's not a technical error, only Mark Genet is starting from the last row. Ricardo Zonta has suffered an injury and will be forced to miss next few races. Eros continues to qualify alongside, although now they one row down. 
Due to head injury, Luka Badova is missing this Grand Prix and he has been replaced by Stefan Sarazen, Zanadi from Williams is 17th. Underwhelming result for Vilnev, who is only 16th, Pedro Dins is 15th. Right in front are Frenchman Gianna Lazy and Italian pros driver Jana Trulli. Olivia Panis improved his previous result by 8 positions as he is now 12th, Ralf Schumacher is 11th. Johnny Hebbett opens top 10, Alexander Woods is 9th. Both Jordans have reserved row 4th, Hill qualified a bit better than Frenson. Eddie Ivine once again is 6th. Will it be his lucky number this time too? Giancarlo Fisichelli is 5th. Michael Schumacher is 4th, this time around Barrichello outqualified him for top 3. First row is no different from previous race, McLarens are flying. David Coulthard is 2nd, Mika Hakkinen has taken another pole position. Tension is at the highest of heights and lights are out, but David Coulthard's McLaren isn't moving. For the second race in a row, McLaren is suffering from issues during start. But luckily, race begins without any crashes, so no need for safety car this time around. Hakkinen, Barrichello and Michael Schumacher are top three cars at the moment. Kulhut comes back into the race, right around the leading pack. Almost simultaneously, Hakkinen has gearbox issues, being stuck on sixth gear. This allows Barrichello to take the lead and make fans and the attendants cheer as loud as they can. Soon after, Michael Schumacher also overtakes Hakkinen. Luckily, McLaren managed to get back to normal, so the battle continues. Hill goes in pursuit for worse, but during attack in the first corner they got into collision, resulting in Hill to retire from the race. Race leader Rubens Barrichello is in the pits. It could be one of the key moments in the race. Crew does their job well, and Rubens is back in fourth position, right behind Eddie Evine. Minadi Stefan Sarazin gets into an accident and he is out. His condition is not under threat. Burkell overtakes Ivan and gets back into top 3. Michael Schumacher's turn to go to pits. Hakkinen reclaims the lead. Now it's Mick Hakkinen in the pits. He was aiming for overcut, so it's crucial for mechanics to not lose the gap during the pit stop. No issues and his strategy has worked brilliantly, as Finnish stays ahead of Michael. At the same lap, Barrichello's car forces to retire. Homegrown driver didn't want the race, but won the hearts of almost every fan in the attendance. Ralph Schumacher overtakes Ivan for fourth position. Mika Hakkinen bounces back from Melbourne's disaster, he stomps to the finish line and wins in dominant fashion. Only Michael Schumacher and Heinz Hans Frensen are in the same lap with him. Speaking of the latter, Frensen is unable to go to the finish. He is out of fuel, but luckily for him, he is still going to take place on podium, since everyone else was at least plus one lap behind the leading trio. Once again, congrats to McLaren for their first victory of the season. Second race has finished and it's time to conclude the results. Mika Hakkinen takes not only the victory, but also the fastest lap of the race, meaning he gains the maximum points at Interlagos. Michael Schumacher takes his first podium being second, and Frensen is the only drive to finish on podium in both races. Ralph Schumacher and Williams is fourth, Australian Grand Prix winner Eva in fifth, Olivier Pan is shown really impressive pace today and he is sixth, earning eight points for Prost, Wurz on Benetton is seventh, Takagi Ants again scores points for Arrows, and Mark Genet managed to finish 9th, getting 2 points for Minari. Everyone else unfortunately won't able to get the 2 to check the flag. Top 3 remains intact. Yvonne and Franz and Rob Schumacher are still leading the standings, but Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher are really close. Fisichella and Burkello didn't score any points today, which allowed Takagi, De La Rosa, Panis and Woods to get into contention for top 6. Mark Genet has two points and proudly represents Minari at the standings. Ferrari is the only team to score points with both cars in both races. This solidified their gap from Jordan, Williams, McLaren and rest of the pack. Benetton and Eros have equal amount of points, but since Benetton has better highest finish, they position higher. Stewart, Prost and Minari own their right to appear on standings. Only Zaube and BAR are without points for now. It was marvelous in Telagos race. Season is heating up and the next stop will be in three weeks at Imola San Marino. See you soon, everybody!
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Formula One comes to Europe first time during this season. And now in San Marino, Imola Circuit will host today's race. Luca Badoe is back, and now we once again have Lestro fully occupied by Minaris, Mark Genes 21st. Takagi once again starts from 20th place, and Mika Salo, who is replacing Ricardo Zona, is 19th. De La Rosa is 18th and total disaster of qualification for Benetton, Woods 17th and Fisichella 16th, Pedro Dins on Zampa again 15th. Italian driver Jano Trulli 14th, second Zab of Jana Lazy 13th. Johnny Hebert qualified 12th, Olivier Panis continue proving now he's 11th. Row 5th is in Williams only mode, Zanardi and Ralph Schumacher 10th and 9th respectively. Row 4th once again wears only yellow color, Hill is 8th and Franson 7th. Barrichello and Stewart 6th and truly pleasant surprise for Williams fans as he qualified 5th. Getting back to the trend of one team one row, we have two Ferraris, Ivan and Michael Schumacher in 4th and 3rd positions. And for the 3rd consecutive time, McLaren is fully in control of the 1st row. Kulhoff is 2nd and Mika Hakkinen has taken 3rd pole of the season. Race starts but not for everybody. Jacques Villeneuve's BAR has frozen. Fortunately, nobody from Pelton has crashed into Villeneuve, but outcome is still terrible. 97 world champion great qualification result has been washed away with the starting wave. Soon after, there is another driver out. It's Jana Trulli and Prost. Hakkinen, Kulhoff, Schumacher, I mean, as top three cars of the race. De La Rosa and Woods have collided and both of them are done for today. Hakkinen managed to create a 12 seconds interval from Kulhut by lap 16. Mika was pushing to the limit because of his two-stop strategy and it cost him at the sudden line. Hakkinen lost the car and crashed into barricade. After a great weekend at Interglagas, finishes out of the race again. Coolhart has taken the lead, but Michael is not far away and his car is lighter. Schumacher is on two-stop strategy and it's time for the first one. Coolhart goes to pits, and since he has one-stop strategy, it takes more time than Michael's. Which allows Ferrari to snatch the lead from Scottish driver. Fans are cheering as this race can basically count as home one for Italian team. Michael is on his second stop. Everything is in the hands of mechanics. And the two-stop strategy has paid off, as Schumacher remains race leader. Kulhide is still second and needs to go through traffic jam. The atmosphere in Ferrari's garage is triumphant. But precisely in the following lap, Ivan suffers from issues with engine and forces to retire. And almost immediately, Francis car slipped on oil left from Ivan. So the race loses two off-season leaders in one lap. Michael Schumacher is storming for the victory. He passes Barry Keller for one lap. After two first races of setbacks, Schumacher capitalizes on opponent's mistakes and gains the first victory of the season. Ferrari's Tifosis are ecstatic. The only driver in the same lap with Michael is David Coulthard, and this second place feels like a bittersweet to him. Fabulous result for Michael Schumacher. He won the Grand Prix and also scored the fastest lap of the race, on a maximum of 26 points. David Coulthard is second, and indeed it may be seen as lost victory, there's some positivity, since it was not only David's first podium of the season, but even first finish in points. Barrichello also takes his first podium but plays in third. Great result for Damon Hill, he's fourth. After two unfortunate races, 12 points must be a huge relief. Fisichella made a great comeback from 16 to 5th position. Alays is 6 as he scored first points for Zaube. Salo debuts in this season and earns first ever points for BAR, even though he didn't saw check it flag. Bado and Jane were slow but reliable. Both cast and points finish for Minari. Stewart's Johnny Herbert today has earned his first point. We have a new leader. Schumacher has 49 points and 14 point gap ahead of his team at Evine. Him, friends, and Ralph Schumacher Hakkinen didn't score a single point, so it allowed Burkell to join the company. Fisichella and Kuhut are not that far away also. Damon Hill slides into top 10. And in general, six more drivers scored their first points today. Since Senado was classified 11th, he also joins the standings. Only Villeneuve, Trulli, and Dins haven't been classified in all three first races. Ferrari has 39 points lead ahead of Jordan and McLaren, who are separated only by one point. Right behind them, the trio of Benetton, Williams, and Stewart. All three of them are within two points gap. Eros is 7th, Prost, Zaub and Minari have 8 points, but BAR is not far away. 
Every team has scored points by third race. In two weeks we will have arguably the most prestigious race of the season in Monaco. Thank you everybody, take care. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, the most luxury Grand Prix of the season has arrived. Monte Carlo Monaco is the home of today's race. Marc Genet is back to 22nd place, but for the first time his neighbor isn't his teammate, it's Pedro Doloroso and Eros. Another row of Minardi Eros combination, Luca Badoa and Toro Takagi at 20th and 19th respectively. Two years ago Olivier Panis was the winner, now his chance to repeat on that high, since he is 18th. Damon Hill and Jordan 17th, Ralph Schumacher surprisingly just 16th. Pedro Dean's shown impressive consistency, third race in a row he starts from 15th position. Jana Leyson Zabu is 14th, Stuart Johnny Habit is 13th. Solid result for Mika Salo, he's starting from 12th, Alexander Zanatti is 11th. Row 5th is Sky Blue, Wurz and Fisichella have shown good pace on Saturday. Row 4th consists of Villeneuve and Trulli, both drivers hope to break their non-finish streak and score first points today. Frensen is 6th and Brukello 5th, maintaining his high bar of qualification results. After two six places, two consecutive four for Evine, and for the first time, Kulhut is on third position. Michael Schumacher climbed the first row, but he is still behind Nick Hakkinen, who has won his fourth pole this season. Lights out and races on. Monaco is famous for being the race where qualification position matters most, so every overtake here is way much more difficult. Knowing that, Michael Schumacher made the most from the first corner and passed Mika for first place. The same thing happened with Evine and Kulhut, so the order is following. Schumacher first, Hakan in second, Iva in third, Kuchel fourth, Brickella fifth, France in sixth. Lap 3 is unlucky for Damon Hill. He gets into an accident with Rolf Schumacher and retires from third race of the season out of four. Kuchel has problems with the car. There is some smoke coming out. Stewart's Johnny Habit loses the car and quits the Grand Prix. Back to Coolhard. After some struggle, David has limped his way to pits, and the race for him is finished. Just like Damon Hill, it's already third DNF for Scottish driver. Hakkinen sleeps on oil leftovers from Takagi, but manages to save the car from collision. Although almost all of his 20 seconds gap ahead of Evine has disappeared. Franson continues to perform strong this season. He is pursuing Barry Keller. Gap is really small, but as always, it's not easy to overtake in Monte Carlo. Reigning world champion goes for his sole stop of the race, which allows Eddie Evine to pass him for second position. Ralph Schumacher crashes into the barrier and this difficult weekend has finally ended for him. But for everyone remaining in the race, there is yellow flag. At the same time, Ralph's brother is fully in control of the race. Another lap, another crash. Now it's Rubens Barrichello who was looking to comfortably score 12 points by finishing 4th, but his suspension had different opinion about that, so Stewart loses both cars due to mechanical fails today. Michael Schumacher flies to the finish and earns second victory in a row, but to sweeten the deal, Eddie Irvine is finishing second and is the first 1-2 of the season. Ferrari is dominating this year so far. Once again congrats to Michael Schumacher and Ferrari for winning Monaco Grand Prix. Irvine is second and Mickey Hakkinen is third. Unfortunately for McLaren he was unable to convert Paul into a win, but he was able to score the fastest lap of the race. France and back in points, he is fourth, right behind the two Benettons, Fisichella and Woods respectively. First points of the season for Italian duo of Trulli and Sinari, and even though Barrichello did not finish, he was classified ninth, adding two points to his count. Michael Schumacher extends his lead, his closest competitors Ivan, Franz and Hakkinen earned maximum of what they could in today's race. On contrary, Ralph Schumacher dropped down to 6th position, due to great performance by Fisichella. Alex Woods climbed 5th positions at once and he is now 9th. In the second part of the standings, tension is getting higher, as we have multiple occasions where two or more drivers have the same amount of points. Ferrari storms Wayne Constructors Championship. Already owning 67 points gap on McLaren, 
who to their credit managed to overtook Jordan, but the margin is only 3 points. Benton looks strong from 4th position, thanks to Zanari Williams retained 5th place. Prost ran away from Zabo and Minari and now is undisputedly 8th. And this was Monaco Grand Prix. Thank you for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed today's race. Next stop in 2 weeks in Spain. See you soon. Buenos dias! Today Formula 1 has arrived to Spain. Let's check how does starting grid looks like. Two Minaris, Badu and Genet occupied row 11th. Row 10th is black and orange, Takagi and Del Rosa. Interestingly that both Spanish rookies won the eternal duels. Alex Woods and Alex Zanotti are 18th and 17th respectively. Miko Sali is 16th on BAR, Olivia Pan is 15th on Prost. Johnny Herbert will be starting 14th, Giancarlo Fisichelli is 13th. Breaking the streak of endless 15 places, Diniz is 12th and Hill 11th. Ralf Schumacher opens top 10, Jano Trulli is 9th. Franson and Barrichello once again have qualified alongside, only difference that it's row 4th this time. Villeneuve continues to qualify in row 3rd. And amazing result by Jeanne Lazy who is 5th, Michael Schumacher is 4th, David Cook is 3rd. Eddie Ivan starts from 2nd, and you guessed it, Mika Hakkinen starts from pole, 5th in a row. Spanish Grand Prix begins, but not a rare sight this season, as we have two cars still standing on the grid. It's Panis and Genet. Hakkinen retains the lead, and Kulhut overtakes Ivan. McLaren managed to take double lead into the first corner. Brilliant start by Villeneuve, who overtook not only a Lacey, but both Ferraris as well climbing into top 3. Barrichello and Franson had a minor contact, but both cars continue. Current top 6 is Hakkinen, Kulhut, Villeneuve, Michael Schumacher, Ivan and Trulli. Schumacher is stuck behind Villeneuve for more than 20 laps, allowing McLaren to storm away. On lap 24 both drivers are going to pits, this is Michael's chance to make an overtake. Ferrari's crew, as always, doesn't budge, and mission is completed as Schumacher comes out in front of Villeneuve. What's more, between the duo is Eddie Irvine. McLaren doing great job so far, as two of their cars have the race under total control. David Kulha drives to pit lane and returns the lead to Mika Hakkinen. Jeanne Lazy also had a pit stop this lap, but unfortunately Bromson weekend is over for the Frenchman. Franzen's car starts to suffer from mechanical issues, his Jordan is slowing as other drivers are passing him one by one. Race is finished for Jacques Villeneuve, 5 DNAFs and 5 races for 97 world champions so far. Second stop for Coulthard, it could be a crucial moment for McLaren, to secure 1-2, as Schumacher is getting closer and closer to a leading duo. Solid pit stop. Hakkinen gets P1 back and Kulhat returns ahead of Michael. Less than 20 laps for Ferrari to change the outcome of the Grand Prix. McLaren was uber motivated and Mika Hakkinen safely led the team for their second victory of the season. And thanks to Kulhut's efforts, it was the first 1-2 for McLaren. Schumacher tried his best, but this week in third place was his maximum. McLaren made a great comeback after disappointing Monaco, scoring 1-2. Schumacher and Ivan are right behind, plus Michael has taken the fastest lap. His brother Ralf is fifth, Jana truly continues to impress by finishing sixth this time. Sold result for Damon Hill as he is seventh, Mika Salo 8th, he solely scored BAI points this season so far, and two Benetton physical and Woods have closed the top 10. Both errors were classified, although didn't score any points. Also worth noting that Stewart's Rubens Barrichello was disqualified for using an illegal under tray. Michael Schumacher continues to lead, but Hakkinen jumps to second position, passing Ivan and Franson. 
Ralf Schumach and David Kuhlhut also improved their standings, but most notably Jano Trulli, who overtook five drivers at once. Mika Salo finishes his duties with BAR after scoring 10 points in three races. Ricardo Zonta should be back next race. Ferrari's lead on McLaren is still huge, but Team from Walken has shown that they are ready for the battle. Prost has passed Arrows and BAR have finally left the last place, as they overtook Zalba and Minardi. This was Spanish Grand Prix. Next stop is in Canada in just two weeks' time. Adios, amigos! Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Formula 1 today has arrived to Canada. We're waiting for an exciting race, but before let's go through starting grid. Minardi once again has row 11th at their disposal, this time Bedoya was quicker than engineer. Similar case for row 10th, as two arrows are here, and Takagi was faster than Del Rosa. Diniz on Zauba 18th, Ricardo Zonda is back and he is 17th. His teammate Villeneuve only 16th and Panis qualifies 15 back to back. Damon Hill still struggles a lot in qualifications as he's just 14th, Ralf Schumacher is only 13th, Zanari was the fastest out of Williams and he's 12th, Alex Woodson Benton 11th, Stewart's Junior Habit 10th, truly as his partner also repeated result from previous race and he's 9th, a lazy keeps to impressive pace, he's 8th, Fisichella 7th. So time in a row, France and Barrichello are starting from the same row in the same order. Kulhat unable to return on first throw for 3 races already, Ivan is 3rd. The streak is over, Mika Hakkinen starts from second position as Michael Schumacher took the pole for the race. Canadian Grand Prix takes underway. First cone is a tricky place to drive, especially at the start. And this time it was Jana Trulli, whose pros slammed into Barrichello and Alesi. The Frenchman and Italian race is over after barely started. At the same time as the accident happened, other Italian Giancarlo Fisichella overtakes David Kuchel for fourth place. Barrichello got into pits, car is badly damaged, but team decides to try to continue. Pace car left relatively quickly, and Kuchel didn't spend much time getting P4 back from Fisichella. Current top three remains intact. Michael Schumacher comfortably leads the race, but suddenly loses his car into Quebec wall. Two-time world champion won't be scoring any points for the first time this season. Jacques Villeneuve's hopes to score his first points were broken by the same wall as Schumacher. After safety car lets the track for the second time, drive is back in action. And once again first set of turns are proving their dangerous reputation, as almost immediately we have a new accident. Kuhl had turned into Ivan back wheel and sent Irishman spinning and got a ticket for grass walk himself. Ivan tries to catch up the positions lost due to the accident, and Kuhlhardt has been penalized with 10 seconds stop and go. After several laps of hunting, Ivan completes the maneuver and overtakes Habit for 5th place. Eddie is keen on getting back as high as possible, and he passes Ralf Schumacher for fourth position. Less than five laps left, and Giacalo Fisichelli is in pursuit for Heinz Held Frenzen. Jordan starts fuming, and the card is unable to hold the pressure, going straight into the barrier. Podium has slipped away from Jordan. Final lap of the race comes to the end, and pace car leaves the track right before the final corner, so everyone is prohibited to overtake. Therefore, for the first time in Formula 1 history, race ends under safety car. Hakkinen takes his third victory, Fisichella scores second place. Second victory in a row for McLaren and Mika Hakkinen is a great result, but it would be fair to say that Fisichella's second place is almost like a win itself for Italian. Eddie Ivan completes the podium trio. Ralf Schumacher fourth, great results for Herbert and Denise. 
for a fifth and sixth respectively. Kuchel stealing points despite the penalty, both Menades managed to climb from last row into top 10, and between them is Panis on Prost scoring two points. Heinz Held Frensen is the only driver outside of points who is classified. Michael Schumacher's error was almost like returning the favor for Imola's race, thus allowing Hakkinen to claim the lead in the standings. Ivan's podium helped him to close the gap on Michael to 9 points. Fisichella climbed 3 places at Anz and now he's sitting in 4th position. But the most impressive progress has came from Johnny Herbert, who is now 12th, thanks to his 5th place. Dennis has scored his first points. Sal is now out of races, as Zonda has returned, but Finnish still holds all of BIR's points. Switching to constructors, Ferrari remains first. But there are some changes, as Benetton stomps in top 3 by passing Jordan. Zalbin and Minardi have returned BAR to last place after one race. Thank you for joining for Canadian Grand Prix. Next race Formula 1 returns to Europe, specifically Monaco circuit in France. So long everybody! Welcome everyone! Formula 1 is in France today. Let's get straight to the business. Thanks to rain, we have very surprising results of qualification. First of all, five drivers – Hill, Genet, Badoer, De La Rosa and Takagi – didn't meet minimum criteria of 107% for qualification, but stewards have allowed them to join the race. Although not according to their time in qualification, but based on car numbers, which teams have earned in the previous season. Therefore, Genet and Badoer are row 11th, Takagi and De La Rosa are row 10th, and Hill is 18th. Right next to him is Eddie Evine on Ferrari. Williams have taken row 8th. Reigning world champion and season leader Mika Hakkinen is just 14th, Alex Woods 13th. Villeneuve 12th from BAR, Pedro Dins is 11th. Sold result for Ricardo Zonto, he is 10th. Herbert and Stewart is 9th. We have Italian row 4th, Julia and Fisichel respectively 8th and 7th. Michael Schumacher stats 6th, Frenson and Jordan's 5th. Back to back 4th places for Kulhat. Great result for Olivia Panis, who is 3rd. And brilliant qualification for Jana Lazy, he's second. And magnificent pole for Rubens Barrichello. Maybe today Stewart will get their first win. Lights out and race begins. Thanks to qualification upsets, overtakes are everywhere. Mika Hakkinen passes Rosonta, Gulhut overtakes Penis. Michael Schumacher also overtakes Frenchman Prost. Hakkinen continues to storm through the grid. By the end of the first lap, everybody is still in the race, but a lot of positions have been swapped. Coolheart has already finished with Alesi and is setting fastest time almost every lap. Barrichello couldn't hold him, so David is flying today. Both McLarens are in great shape, as Hakkinen already six and attacking his main opponent for the title, Michael Schumacher. Ferrari unable to match the pace and Mick already up 9 places only after 10 laps in the race. Unexpectedly, Kulhut's car refuses to continue. Scotsman forced to quit after so promising starting part. Hakkinen is currently fourth, but his sights are already set on Frenzen. He got really close to the German, so the overtake was only a matter of time. And at the same corner as with Schumacher, Mika passes Jordan for third place. Next target is a lazy. Only four more laps were needed to finish driver to make the move and climb up to second position. Rain has begun and it forces everybody to go to the pits for tires change. Top 5 remains the same, although Heinz, Harold Franzen and Michael Schumacher were really close to get into an accident. Weather conditions are getting worse and worse. It's difficult to drive the car even in wets. And unluckily for Jean Alesi, he's out from his home Grand Prix. Following lap and another driver becomes a victim of rain. It's Villeneuve, whose DNF streak extends to 7 races. Safety car has left the track and the race is back on.
Hakkinen closes to Barrichello, but he slips while trying to pass and he has to fight back from 8th place. Michael Schumacher is in pursuit for race lead. And he overtakes Barrichello relatively easy, as if they are teammates. Michael immediately starts to create a gap. Schumacher suffers from issues with the car. He almost lost all the gap he created. Michael goes to box to change steering wheel, which should help him to at least finish the race in points. Hakkinen bounces back from his error as he is approaching Frensen to overtake him. And Mick is doing just dead for second place. Hakkinen catches Barry Keller and now he successfully passes him for the lead. What a comeback by McLaren! Mick Hakkinen goes for his second stop, but he's unable to return first. Frensen has one stop strategy and he finds himself leading the race less than 10 laps to go. Battle of two brothers. Ralph attacks Michael for fourth place and leaves both Ferrari behind. Jordan's strategists have masterly structured the race and Heinz Held Frensen takes his first win for the team. Money course is yellow today. First ever win for France in driving Jordan and his second overall in his career. Hakkinen still can be satisfied with his powerful comeback. Starting from 14th and finishing second is quite an achievement. Rubens Barrichello unable to convert pole into a win, but at least he got a podium. Ralf Schumacher takes fourth place in back-to-back -back races. His older brother is fifth and Eva in sixth. Sold race for Prost, both Trulli and Panis have scored points. Also, Ricardo Zonta managed to finish in top 10 first time this season. And Luca Badoa added one point to his tally. Mika Hakkinen increases his gap on Michael Schumacher to 10 points. Ivan stays third, but after his win, Frensen climbs back to positions and is in pursuit for Irishman. Ralf Schumacher stays fifth despite passing physical in standings. Berkel and Kuhut are tied, but Scotsman is ahead thanks to second place finishes. Truly gets into top 10. Panis climbs to 12th place and Zond is now classified, with 2 points to his count. Ferrari and McLaren both scored 18 points this race, so no changes at the top. But right next is Jordan again, as they pass Benetton. Williams is only 2 points behind, plus Stewart isn't far away. This was French Grand Prix. What a race! I hope you liked it as well. Next time we will meet in Silverstone, Great Britain. Take care and see you soon! Welcome ladies and gentlemen! We are in the United Kingdom, specifically in Silverstone, its circuit will host today's race. Time to check the starting order. Genet and Badoy again starting from row 11th, this time Luca was faster. Eros and Smoke has taken row 10th, Takagi is ahead of Del Rosa. Surprisingly, Benetton occupied whole row 9th, Fisichella was quicker than Woods. Zonta breaks and go in team of qualifying with your teammate at the same row, since Panis is 15th. But another Prost, truly, is right next. He continues to qualify alongside of his compatriots, now it's Alex Zanotti. Dietz is up at 12th, Stewart's joining Hab at 11th. Gianna Lazy will start from 10th place, next is Jacques Villeneuve, looking for his first points today. Ralf Schumacher took 8th position on the grid, Barrichello down from previous Grand Prix pole to 7th place. Jordan did a good job in qualification and took 3rd row in its entirety. Eddie Evine starts from 4th position, David Coulthard unable to get back at 1st row for 5 consecutive qualifications. Michael Schumacher is 2nd and Mika Hakkinen with a huge gap on everybody, took his 6th pole position this season. Race begins! But there are two cars still glued to the starting grid. It's Villeneuve and Zanotti. 
Stewards have decided to go with red flag, and it means race should be stopped. But not everyone were aware of the decision. Top 4 were running in full-blown race mode. Specifically Michael Schumacher, who had lost two positions to Kuhat and Evine, tried to get back as fast as he could to prevent Hakkinen of making a gap. Michael was trying to overtake Evine at the end of the hunger straight. But before he could make it in the stock corner, rear brake on Michael's Ferrari has stopped walking, and he hit the barrier at 108 km per hour. As we can see on the replay, crash was life-threatening. But luckily, Michael is conscious, and he was quickly transferred to hospital, where he was diagnosed with a broken leg. Disastrous news, but rooting for Michael's recovery, and hopefully we will see him this season again. Second attempt to start the race and Evine capitalized an empty space to overtake Coulthard. But once again there is a car still standing on the grid. Now is De La Rosa. Instantly yellow flags are activated and stewards quickly decide for safety car to remain on track. At the end of the second lap, safety car returns to pit lane and race finally enters normal mode. Coulthard is right behind Evine and tries to reclaim second position. Franzen and Ralf Schumacher are going to pits together, Jordan is ahead. Williams' crew managed to perform the stop faster and it allowed Ralf to overtake his countryman for fifth place. Proper Schumacher-style overtake. Eddie Ewein leads the race, after Mika Hakkinen went for his stop several laps ago. Speaking of the latter, Mika started to lose the pace so that Kulhut was able to pass him for second position. At the same time, Ewein is on the pit lane. and Ferrari's crew did a job well, but not quick enough to prevent Kulhut from taking the lead. Hakkinen is in trouble, he has lost left back wheel, luckily for him pit lane was really close, so with three remaining wheels he was able to lean back the pits. After his second stop in less than 5 laps, Mika Hakkinen has lost a lot of time and now he is one lap behind the leaders. On contrary, Kulhard is first and confidently continues the race, not giving Ivan many chances. Hakkinen calls it a day, his McLaren is in great shape and there is nothing much to hope for this race. After very eventful first part of the race, last 20 plus laps were relatively calm. David Coulthard was driving brilliantly, he led the race and took the first victory at his home soil. Eddie Evine is second. Congratulations to David Coulthard for his first win this season. Now every McLaren and Ferrari drivers has won at least one race. Evine is second, but considering both Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen didn't score any points today, it is a huge result. Ralph Schumacher close podium trio, really solid race from him. Two Jordans, friends and Hill are fourth and fifth respectively. Great result for Zalbert, Dinitz is 6th, Fisichella 7th, Barrichello 8th, Trulian Prost 9th and Woods adds one more point to Benetton count. Mika Hakkinen took the fastest lap of the race, but since he didn't finish, he wasn't awarded with a bonus point. Mika Hakkinen remains first, but Eddie Ewan is just 3 points behind. Unfortunately, Michael Schumacher has a broken leg and will be out of the season indefinitely, so wish Michael speed recovery again. But starting from next race, Ferrari will have to find somebody else to drive his car. Back to standings, thanks to his victory, Kuhl had passed Fisichella for 6th place. Hill overtook Truly, but truly remarkable progress by Dinitz, who climbed 7 positions at once. Ferrari is still ahead of everybody, McLaren is 30 points behind. The same 30 points distances between Jordan and Williams, who passed Benetton for 4th position. Also worth noting that Zalbo took arrows and now sitting on 8th place. This was British Grand Prix. The race was difficult and we once again wish Michael Schumacher to get well soon. Next stop is in Austria two weeks from today. See you soon. Welcome everyone, Formula 1 is back. Now we are in Austria. A1 ring awaits for race to took off. Time to check from which positions drivers will start. Just like in Monaco, last row consists of two Spanish rookies, Chenin and Del Rosa. But if at row 11th Eros driver was faster than Minardi's one, at row 10th it was the opposite, Bedoya ahead of Takagi. 
Underwhelming qualification for Panis and Alesi, they found themselves as the pairing of row 9th. Only second time this season Tinis managed to outqualify Alesi, Ricardo Zonte is 15. Iano Trulli and Alex Zanata again took row 7th, but now they swapped places. Giancarlo Fisichello is 12th, Damon Hill, who decided to postpone his retirement after a positive result in Silverstone, is 11th. Top 10 starts with Alex Woods, this is the first occasion when he qualified better than Fisichella. Villeneuve will start 9th in back-to-back -back races. Ralf Schumach also has a repeated result from previous qualification, but alongside him is Mika Salo, who will replace Ralph Brazo in Ferrari until Michael will be able to come back. Strong showing by Stewart, Johnny Hebden and Rubens Barrichello are 6th and 5th respectively. Personal best this season for Franson, who starts 4th, and Eddie Ivan was 3rd fastest in qualification. David Coulthard is 2nd and Mika Hakkinen literally strong through the track and earned his 7th pole out of 9 possible. Lights out and Austrian Grand Prix begins. Homegrown hero Alex Woods tries to overtake Ralf Schumacher, but German reclaimed position even before first corner. Both McLaren started good and went together into turn 2, where a collision happened. David Coulthard sent Mick Hakkinen spinning and almost straight after Mika Salo removes Johnny Habit's spoiler. Hakkinen sat at the back of the peloton. Let's take a look at the replay. All this chaos may be a letter for Eddie Ewan's success. Not an Irish driver will have to try his best to capitalize on that McLaren error. Coolhart took the lead due to the incident during the first lap. Stewart didn't penalize him for that. Barry Keller second, Ewan third, Franson fourth, and Jack Wilner already climbed to the fifth place. Mika Salo goes to fourth stop because of his collision with Johnny Herbert, not the best start for Mika and Ferrari. Meanwhile, another Mika Hakkinen fully focused to make a comeback. He's already 17th and right behind two roses. Hakkinen already 14th and preparing an attack on Hill. McLaren's space is too much for Jordan, so Mika climbs another position up. Pedro Diniz is putting the pressure on Ralf Schumacher, who himself tries to overtake Villeneuve, but Ralf loses the car and it gets stuck into gravel. David Coulthard has already created 10 plus seconds gap on Rubens Barrichello and Eddie Evine. It will be difficult for Stewart and Ferrari to prevent Scotsman from taking a back to back win. His partner, Hakkinen, continues to break through the field, and his next target is Frenson in battle for fourth. Just like it was with Hill, Mick overtakes another Jordan and continues his tremendous run. The following lap is the last for Villeneuve, 9 DNFs in a row. Ivan took the lead from David Coulthard, but Eddie only now goes for his first pit stop. Last few laps he was pushing as hard as he can to make a Novakat successful. Will it pay off? It seems it does. Ivan remains the leader, although McLaren still has more than 20 plus laps to continue the battle. Another excellent overtake by Hakkinen. He has passed Barrichello for third place. Less than 10 laps later and Barrichello forced to retire from the race. Eddie Evine remains first, but Coulthard has been firing on all cylinders to catch up on him. But Northern Irish driver was rock solid and took his well-deserved second victory of the season. Time to celebrate for Scuderia Ferrari. Eddie Evine wins his second race and leaves two McLarens behind. Coolhood, of course, must be disappointed with the second place, but for Hakkinen, despite being one position lower, things may have gone much worse. His comeback from 22nd to 3rd was marvelous. Francis scored 12 points by finishing 4th, Alex Woods was able to cheer the audience with his season best result. Denis on Zabba 6th, Trulin Pro 7th. Hill again finishes in points after calling off his decision to retire. Salo gets back into racing and, as it was with BAR, now he immediately scores points for Ferrari, but he's closest top 10. Mika Hakkinen scored the fastest lap of the race and earned an additional point, which may be crucial at the end of the season. Eddie Ivan not only won today, but he also took the lead in the standings. Hakkinen is just 6 points behind, so the most interesting things are ahead. Michael Schumacher is still in top 3, Frenson within 6 points distance. Kuhat now 5th, he passed Ralf Schumacher. No more changes in top 10, but right next is Alex Woods, who jumped one position thanks to today's top 5 finish. Only one other driver has progressed in standings, it's Mika Salo, who climbed two positions up. Ferrari continues to lead, but McLaren managed to reduce gap from 30 to 23 points, so striking distance is getting less and less. Jordan is constantly sitting in third place. 
Benjamin and Williams are swapping positions for three races in a row. Now it's Blue Sky team who are ahead. Everyone else have remained where they are, but margins are not that big. It may take only one race to spice things up. This was Austrian Grand Prix. It was captivating and I have a feeling that next race in Germany will be also exciting. See you next week! Welcome everyone! Tenth race of the season has arrived. And today we are visiting Hockenheim for German Grand Prix. First time this season there are no Minati cars that drove 11th, Takagi will start 22nd, Gianna Lacy found himself just 21st, De La Rosa leads 6-4 in his duel with Takagi and will start 20th, but ends again 19th. Ricardo Zonto on BAR starts 18th, Johnny Hebert and Stewart only 17th. Diniz qualifies 16 two times in a row, Marc Genet took 15th place which is quite an achievement for Minati. Alessandro Zanati 14th again, Alex Woods on Benetton is 13th. Jacques Villeneuve on BAR starts 12th, he still haven't scored any points this season. Ralf Schumacher is 11th. Giancarlo Fisichella wins 9-1 against Wurz qualifications battle. Jano Trull starts from 9th position. Damon Hill and Jordan qualified 8th. Prost Olivia Panis will begin race 7th. Rubens Barrichello 6th, he has qualified 5 times at 3rd row. Eddie Ivai only 5th. His interim partner Mika Salo managed to outqualify him and will start 4th. David Cook had 3rd. Franson first time qualified at 1st row and it's already 8th ball for Mika Hakkinen out of 10th possible. McLaren is aiming for the win. German Grand Prix begins. Goulhard, Ivan and Frensen all got caught up during the start, which allowed Mika Salo to move on to second place. Both Mikas are ahead. In the back there is an accident, Genet had a contact with Vilnev, who then crashed into Dinis, taking both drivers out even before the first turn. Hakkinen leads the race. Salo is second, Goulhard third. Perkello started well and already attacking Frensen's Jordan. Overtake is successful and Rubens moves to fourth place. But it's a deja vu for Barrichello, as he is out from the race two consecutive weeks due to mechanical failure. David Coulthard has got really close to Mika Salo and tries to pass him for second position. There is a contact, and Scotsman loses a part of his front wing. This puts David's chances into huge jeopardy. As we can see in a replay, Salo wasn't the one to blame for that. So no penalties, just a racing incident. Eddie Irvine is putting the pressure on Heinz Harald Frensen, but the German is able to withstand the attack from the Northern Irish driver and remains third. Third indeed, since David Coulthard was forced to go to pits to replace the front win. Scotsman is losing positions, falling to 10th place. Irvine and Ferrari strategists are on their way to master the art of overcut. Second week in a row, Eddie overtakes his opponent this way. Heinz Harald Frensen is now behind Ferrari. Race leader Mika Hakkinen is in pits for his first stop. McLaren's crew has issues with fuel hose, which caused a lot of time for reigning world champion, and his chances to win the race are drastically going down. Rob Schumacher is also in pits, and technically he takes the lead. Soon after, both Ferraris are approaching the starting line, and they are taking the race under their control. Heinz Harald Frensen also took Hakkinen during his long pit stop, but Mika decided to not waste any time and attack German driving as soon as he can, and successfully got back into top 3. Mika is behind only two Ferrari, Salo and Invina leading, but the hunt mode is on. But suddenly Hakkinen's left back tire has bursted, Mika has lost the control of his car and McLaren went into the barrier. Flashbacks of Michael Schumacher's Silverstone crash immediately are coming to mind. As it can be seen during the replay, the whole accident happened out of blue, and it could have ended with a very dangerous outcome, but thankfully Mika is ok. He left the car himself and didn't suffer major injuries. The German race is over for him. But the battle for championship is still on. Ferrari's drivers have swapped places. Mika Salo has left Ivan through for first position. David Coulthard got 10 seconds stop and go penalty, which pushed him two positions down. Ferrari managed to turn what could have been McLaren's triumph into red double. Eddie Ivan wins the race, Mika Salo is second, and Heinz Held Frensen has secured last ticket for today's podium. Extraordinary weekend for Ferrari. This is their second one two of the season. Mika Salo deserves all the credit, and his strong showing will surely increase his chances to get a seat for the next season. Many teams will now look closely at him as a possible option. Frensen could be satisfied with third place. Podium is a podium after all. Ralph Schumacher finishes at fourth position, four time this season. Kuchot is just fifth, but he at least took the fastest lap of the race, gaining extra point. Panisson Pro six. Alex Woods three races in a row finishes in points. Today he's seventh. Janelle is 8th, and two reliable Minaris both got in the top 10.
Evine has built a 31 points gap ahead of Hakkinen. It looks dangerous for Mika, but only 4 races away Hakkinen himself was 21 points ahead, so things may change quickly. Frenson overtakes Michael Schumacher and climbs into top 3. Other than that, top 10 saw only one new entrant. It's Alex Woods who ties with Hill. But 96 world champion is ahead thanks to best high finish, 4th place. Mika Sal already 11th, climbing 3 positions up. The same progress was made by Jeanne Lazy, who is now 15th instead of 18th. Also worth noting that Jeanne has passed Del Rosa for 18th position. Villeneuve without points for 10 races out of 10, so he still hasn't been classified yet. Ferrari has turned 23 points difference into 55, which make their aspirations for Constructors Championship indeed more strong. Battle for fourth between Williams and Benetton are the hottest one at the moment. Four consecutive Grand Prix teams are changing positions. Also, thanks to double finish in points, Minardi climbed from last place to 10th. Remaining six races had opportunities for BAR to improve. This was German Grand Prix. Race had a lot of different twists and battle for the championship goes closer to its final act. For now we have two weeks break and then we will meet in Hungary. See you soon! Welcome everyone! We are in Hungary, who is hosting the 11th Grand Prix of the season. And of course, let's firstly take a look at the starting grid. Eight times this season Marc Genet starts from the last position. Takagi accompanies him at row 11th. Row 10th is the identical from the previous race. Badoe will start 19th for the second consecutive time. After brilliant German Grand Prix, Mika Salov will qualified here on the 18th, Zonto and BAR 17th. Williams took row 8th, Alex Zanari has turned scored into 4 7 against his partner qualification battle. Ross has booked row 7th, Jan truly leads versus Panis with the same 7 4 score. And row 6 today belongs to Zauber. This time gap is bigger, Jan Alizzi leads 8 3. Row 5th consists of Johnny Habiton Stewart and Jack Villeneuve from BAR. Rubens Barrichello starts from 8th, alongside him is Alex Woods and Benetton. Jordan drivers are qualified together at 3rd row, Franson dominates with the score 10-1 against Hill. Giancarlo Fisichella has impressed by qualifying 4th, David Coulthard will start 3rd. Despite leading in the standings, it's only the second time when Ivan has reached 1st row, and for Mickey Hagenen it's already 9th pole of the season. Hungarian Grand Prix begins. Kulhut has overslept the start and it allowed Fisichella and Franson to pass him. Fisichella's partner Alex Woods, on contrary, has dropped one position down after Rubens Barrichello made his successful attack for 7th place. Mika Hakkinen started perfectly, he not only remains first, but already has begun to build a solid gap on Eddie Evine. Mika Salo has lost two positions and stuck behind Pedro de la Rosa on arrows. David Coulthard is getting closer to Frenzen, but Hungaroyen isn't the place where overtakes are easy, the Scotsman has to try something different. And six laps after, Coulthard goes to his first pit stop. He stayed on track for a bit longer and tries to perform an overcut. Attempt was successful. Coulthard comes back ahead of both, Sikova and Frenzen. Benetton mechanics are waiting for Fisichella's second stop. Chances for podium are still existing, but there is an issue with the car and pit stop becomes retirement from the race. Battle for second place between Eddie Evine and David Coulthard are getting more and more tense. Scotsman is basically sitting on Evine's spoiler, but once again due to track not being favorable for overtakes, Coulthard has very limited options for taking maneuvers, and one of them is pit stop. Both drivers are doing it simultaneously. So everything depends on which team will do their job the fastest. McLaren vs Ferrari. Will the overtake happen? But status quo has remained and both cars have returned to their respective positions. Five more laps have passed and Eddie Evine is still forced to defend from David Coulthard's attacks. Pressure is high as there are more than 10 laps left to go. Evine makes an unforced error, he loses the car and goes outside the track, which was more than enough for David Coulthard to capitalize and move up to second position. Evine managed to return and he is down to third. Zaubis Gianni Lazy has to quit just two laps before the race finish. And instead of several points, Alesi gets his 8th retirement out of 11 races. Probably lack of reliability was one of the key factors for the Frenchman's decision to leave the team. In the next season, he will be driving for Prost. After disappointing German Grand Prix, Mika Hakkinen has won of the smoothest races of the season. He won the sole leader during the whole race, didn't face any problems and deservedly took his 4th victory in 1999. 
Battle for the championship intensifies. Mika will not give up until the end. David Kulhat has also contributed to the team's success and has finished second. Second double for McLaren. Mika Hakkinen back on top of the podium, David Kulhat alongside him, but Eddie Ewine, even though he slipped from second, at least has remained third, minimizing the losses as best as he could. Heinz Halt Frenzen has finished fourth, Rubens Barrichello back to points, he is fifth, Damon Hill is sixth. Alex Woodson Benetton has finished where he started, at 7th. Jano Trulin Prost 8th, Ralf Schumacher has climbed up 7 positions and has added 2 points to his tally. Olivier Panis closes top 10. David Coulthard has snatched the fastest lap of the race from his teammate and added one extra point to himself. Jacques Villeneuve is still unable to see the checkered flag. 11 out of 11 races without finish. Eddie Ivan remains first, but the gap has decreased, as now 21 points are between two leaders. France and Sir, he is 30 points behind, but David Coulthard is not far away. He has passed Michael Schumacher for fourth and six points from Heinz Hald. Michael's brother Ralph is also approaching, only 10 points are separating them. Jano Trulli has moved to 11th place by passing Mika Salo, for whom today's race is the one to forget. Other than that, everyone has retained their current positions. Ferrari's lead has reduced from 55 to 26 points, so the battle for the constructors is just the status for the Drivers' Championship. What still remains the most close one is Benetton vs Williams for fourth place. For five consecutive races, teams are changing positions, but some might say that it's more of a battle of between Benetton and Ralf Schumacher, because of total 94 points, Zenari has brought just four. Hungarian Grand Prix 1999 has become a part of the history. Next race will be in two weeks. We're going to Belgium. See you soon. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today it's time for the legendary track of Spa Francorchamps to host its annual race. Let's go through the grid. Row 11th is Spanish today. Pedro de la Rosa 22nd and Marc Genes 23rd. Their teammates took row 10th. Toro Takagi won the battle against Luca Bedoya. Zalbus Perodinis is 18th and Olivier Panis and Prost has qualified 17th. His countryman, Jenna Lacy, is 16th. Benetton driver Alex Woods 15th. Ricardo Zonton BAR has qualified 14th, Giancarlo Fisichello will start from 13th position. Row 6 consists of Prostiana Trulli and BAR's Jacques Villeneuve. Will today be his lucky race? Two consecutive times Johnny Habit qualifies 10th, Mikasal is just 9th, which is hurting Ferrari chances to handle McLaren. Solid 8th place for Alessandro Zanotti, this is his season's best, Rubens Barrichello 7th. Season leader Eddie Ewine will start just 6th, Ralf Schumacher took 5th place. Jordan again has qualified alongside but now they moved one row up. McLaren drivers have also qualified together. Kuchert is second and Hakkinen scored his 10th pole position. Lights out and Belgium Grand Prix begins. A lazy had to be extra cautious because Ricardo Zonda has remained at the starting grid. Two McLarens went ahead, but Mika Hakkinen has moved prematurely, which has affected his start overall and allowed Kuchert to get an advantage. Thus David was able to come out the leader after the first corner. Let's check from different angles how did the start went. Hakkinen's movement might have been classified as a false start, but since he quickly corrected himself and eventually lost the position to David Kluchert, stewards may decide not to give him a penalty. Taking a look from the Scotsman car, you can see how Hakkinen went ahead for several meters. This might cost Mika a fortune, although he still has 40 plus laps to get the lead back. Jordan Svensson was ready to capitalize in case McLaren's would have collided, but for now he remains third. Ivan is fourth, two Williams, Schumacher and Zanari are fifth and sixth respectively. Jean Alesi is pursuing Giancarlo Fisichella for 11th position. Zauber's pace seems to be better today and soon enough the Frenchman relatively easy overtakes Benetton and continues his hunt for top 10th. David Coulthard is storming away from Mika Hakkinen, increasing the gap significantly lap by lap. Mika Salo has climbed up three positions, he is right ahead of Ralf Schumacher and Williams, who has already got really close to the Finnish driver. Eddie Ewan is currently fourth, but he is still due to make his first pit stop. His partner Mika Salo is doing all he can to slow down Ralf Schumacher and help Eddie to perform an overcut. Finally, Ewan is in pits, so it's now in mechanic's hands, and as usual this season Ferrari crew is doing an amazing job helping the Norwich Ironman to remain ahead of Ralf Schumacher. Although Mika Salo himself was able to pass Ivine, Ferrari drivers almost had a contact, but not even single lap passes as Ferrari team's principal, 
Jean Todt has ordered the Finnish driver to let Ivan ahead. Thus increasing Eddie's chances to win the battle for the championship against McLaren drivers. After taking the lead in the first corner, David Coulthard was ahead during the whole race and won his second Grand Prix of the season in a dominant fashion. Second double in a row for McLaren Mercedes. Although positions have been swapped, total amount of points gained for the team remains the same. David Coulthard is the winner, Mika Hakkinen took both the second place and the fastest lap of the race. Heinz Harald Frensen earned himself a place on the podium. Eddie Wein is fourth, Ralf Schmacher has finished fifth. Damon Hill scores back-to-back -back sixth place finishes. Mick Sal is seventh, Alessandro Zanaro Williams eighth. Jean Lazy has made an impressive race and moved seven positions up to ninth, and Rubens Barrichello has closed the top ten. What's without a doubt worth to be mentioned is that Jacques Villeneuve has finally broke the streak of DNFs and has been classified fifth in this race. Despite finishing fourth, Ivine still has 14 points advantage on Hakkinen. Mick has won less to duels versus Ivine, so momentum is on his side. Thanks to his victory, Kulher has passed Frensen and jumped into top three. He is 30 points behind Hakkinen and 44 away from Ivine. With four races to go, the main question is still wide open. Ralf Schumacher has matched his older brother's points, but due to Michael has two victories, he has remained fifth. Mika Salvo has again overtook Truly for 11th place. Alex Zanari has managed to double his points count and climb one position up. And finally, Jacques Villeneuve joins driver standings by breaking his DNF streak. Although he doesn't have any points yet, so an not unlike a streak still needs to be broken. For the first time this season, it's not Ferrari who holds first position. Thanks to big amount of victories, 6 vs 5, McLaren Mercedes has taken the lead in the Constructors' Championship. Four remaining races are going to be decisive. Speaking of number 4, Williams and Benetton have again swept places in a battle for fourth. Williams began to build a gap, they're 12 points ahead. Everyone else's positions have remained unchanged. Two last races were decided in the first corner, but I'm sure that the season will give us some quality battles for the victories. In two weeks we will be in Monza, Italy. See you soon! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen! Summer has ended, but season continues. We are in Monza, Italy, and everything is almost ready to begin 13th Grand Prix of the year. First time this season both Arrows have parked at row 11th, De La Rosa leads 7-6 against Takagi. Also today marks the first occasion of both Minardis at row 10th, but Duo is ahead 9-3 against Genet. Ricardo Zonto on BAR has qualified 18th, Giancarlo Fisichelli is 17th. When you are thinking about tight margins, it's hardly can be any closer. Next, four drivers have set their qualification times within 5 thousandths of a second. Dinitz is 16th, Habit 15th, Woods 14th and Alesi is 13th. Row 6 remains identical to the previous qualification. Trulli and Villeneuve are 12 and 11 respectively. Top 10 starts with Prost and Olivia Panis. Damon Hill and Jordan has qualified 9th. Ivan's driver's standings lead is in danger, as he is just 8th. Burkello is 7th. Mika Sal will start from 6th position, Ralf Schumacher again took 5th place. Brilliant result in home soil for Zanardi, he is 4th. David Kulhut 3rd and he is losing 1-12 to Hakkinen. Frensen for the second time this season starts from the first row. And Mika Hakkinen gets his 11th fall position out of 13 possible. Lights out and Italian Grand Prix takes underway. Perfect start by Lizana Zanardi. He has managed to pass both Heinz Harald Frensen and David Coulthard for the second place. The Scotsman has surely seen better starts as he goes down three positions. Let's get back to the replay of the start. As we can see, Frensen was too focused on not letting Coulthard to pass, completely opening the space for Zanardi, who didn't hesitate. But very quickly, Heinz Halt was able to catch up Williams of the Italian driver, and Jordan has reclaimed the second position. Mika Hakkinen had a strong start, he leads the race and begins to build a gap. Rubens Barrichello uses slipstream against David Coulthard and passes him for sixth place. Not the best race for the Scotsman so far. Team tactics from Williams, as Alessandro Zanardi lets Ralf Schumacher to pass him for third place. Takagi is attacking Badwoyer and they have a collision. Tronosuke took the ward attacking literally and has crashed into Minadi. Barrichello continues his impressive run as he overtakes Zanadi. Mika Hakkinen is leading, but unexpectedly he makes a mistake and his race is over within a few seconds. Mika has used the first gear going into the corner, which has led to his back wheels getting blocked. The car went outside the track and got stalled. 
Sal and Kuhut are the two leading drivers and they are both going into pits. In meantime, Franson gets back in the lead. McLaren's crew has an issue with fuel hose. While Sal is already leaving the pit lane, DC was forced to spend extra precious seconds waiting, which has helped Stuins Rubens Barrichello to once again pass the Scotsman and move to the fourth position. Heinz Harold Franson is on his way to the second victory of the season. Jadon's driver had a great race and earns fully deserved 25 points. Ralf Schumacher is close behind as he finished second. German double podium. Jordan deservedly wins in Italy. Frenzen was making costly mistakes and after Hakkinen's retirement he got the clean way for the victory. Ralf Schumacher was great today and not only he took the second place, but he's also gained an extra point for the fastest lap. Mika Salo did a solid job and scored his second podium by finishing third. Barrichello adds 12 points to his tally as he is fourth, Kuhut is only fifth, but at least he scored some points. The same could be said about Ivan, since he is sixth. Zanardi, by finishing seventh on his home soil, has achieved his season best. Villeneuve finally scored points, he is eighth, a lazy ninth and Hill closes top ten. Today's mistake may cost Mika Hakkinen a title. Luckily for him, Ivan didn't earn that many points, so with three races to go, things still may change drastically. But for now, the Northern Irishman is leading with 22 points gap. Frenson, thanks to his victory back in top three, he himself is 31 points behind Ivan. Kuhl had fourth, Ralph has passed Michael for fifth. Barrichello moved up to seventh, Mika Salo now is in top ten. It's better late than never for Alex Zanardi as he's four positions up. And Jacques Villeneuve is no longer the last as he has passed his teammate Ricardo Zonta. Ferrari is back in the lead. 13 points difference isn't something that allows to be considered a huge favorite, but with only three races remaining, any point is important. Williams seems to be on course to defeat Benetton, as the teams are now separated by 37 points. This was Italian Grand Prix. In two weeks we will have a final European race of the season. Nürburgring awaits, time will pass quickly. See you soon everybody. Welcome everyone! Technically it is a Grand Prix of Europe, but if to be specific we are in Germany at number ring circuit. Last year it was the home of Luxembourg Grand Prix, now it became the race of the whole continent. In a back-to-back -back qualifications Eros has taken row 11th, Takagi has tied his score to 7-7. Same thing could be said about Minardi, row 10th is theirs, but duo score is now 10-3. Alex Zanardo and Williams is 18th and alongside is Ricardo Zonto of BAR. Gianna Lacy has qualified 16th and it's the first time this season when Barrichello isn't a part of top 10. His partner, Johnny Herbert, is 14th, and it's also the first time when he outqualified Rubens. Berdrin Sozabo is 13th. Mika Salenfra just 12th, Alex Woods took 11th spot on the grid for Benetton. Prost Jan truly opens top 10, and championship contender Eddie Ivan is only 9th. Speaking of champions, Rolfoff has 2 of them, Jacques Villeneuve 8 and Damon Hill is 7th. Good qualification for Vizikela is he is 6th, but even more impressive for Panis since he took 5th place. Ralf Schumacher will start from 4th place and Mika Hakkinen just for the second time out of 14 won't be starting from 1st row. But who will are David Kulhat from 2nd place and Heinz Halt Frenzel coming hot after his sponsor victory as he takes the pole position. Race begins, except it's not. Several drivers got carried away and moved before the lights went out. Therefore stewards have decided to do restart. And from the second attempt, everything went as expected. Heinz Halt Frenzel has retained his first position and two McLarens jumped in for pursuit. Coming into the series of first corners, a lot of cars are too close to each other. And this time around, Alex Woods Benetton has collided with Pedro Zauber. And this contact has led to a scary accident. Pedro's car has rotated several times and stayed upside down. Ambulance come quickly, and Pedro's life is not in danger. As we can see in the replay, Woods tried to not collide with Jordan's heel and moved to the right, where he caught Zauber in the left rear wheel. Safety car is already on the track, therefore no overtakes are allowed, although Mick Hakkinen has managed to pass David Kulha before that. Eddie Ivan puts the pressure on Fisichella and eventually the Italian makes the mistake, which allows Ivan to move for fifth position. It seems that weather has begun to change, raindrops are appearing. Meanwhile, Ralf Schumacher battles against two McLarens and manages to overtake Kulha for third place. 
At the same lap, Mika Hakkinen gets cold to the pits. Crew changes tires to wets. McLaren is betting on the rain getting heavier. The following lap, Ivan also goes for the pit stop. Unlike Hakkinen, he remains on slicks. But in an untypical fashion, Ferrari fumbles the pit stop, losing precious seconds. And just in three laps, Ivan has reduced all the gap from Hakkinen and Eddie overtakes him for 12th place. It's quite unusual to see those two drivers battling outside not just top 3, but even top 10. McLaren fixes the mistakes and switches wets to slicks for Hakkinen. The leading duo of Heinz Harald Franzen and David Coulthard is heading to the pit lane. Neither side is thinking about wets anymore. Both pit stops are smooth and quick, therefore drivers have retained the status quo. With half the distance passed, Franzen's aspirations for second consecutive victory are looking good. But barely, the German has turned into the first corner, his Jordan has lost the power and cut just stopped. Franzen is out of the race. Franzen's retirement paves the way to Kulhut's victory. But just several laps after the Scotsman loses his car and goes straight into used tires. Race is over for DC. Giancarlo Fisichella leads the race, but suddenly he spins and goes out of the track. This is a complete fiasco for Fisico and Benetton. New leader is Ralph Schumacher. Will he be able to withstand this leader curse that we observe here? It seems that not, because the German gets a puncture and also travels away from the track to the sand. William's hopes of winning has melted. Limping, Ralph gets to pit lane, but he loses a lot of time. Therefore, Stewart's joining habit takes the lead. Minadi's Luca Badoer finds himself at fourth place, but unfortunately for the Italian team, his car is unable to continue. Therefore, all the hope is now only for Mark Jenner. Mika Hakkinen is getting really close to Eddie Ivan and prepares an attacking maneuver. Eddie makes an error and Mika capitalizes on it, moving to sixth position. Battle for the championship continues. Reigning world champion is flying through the track, he manages to pass Jeanette for fifth place. Johnny Herbert has done an astounding job and kept his steward ahead of everyone. Remarkable and hard-earned victory for the Englishman. It's safe to say that this was the most unpredictable race of the season so far. Hats off to Stuart team and especially Johnny Herbert for figuring out and taking the victory. Jan and Trulli has achieved his career highest finish today, and Rubens Burkello helped Stuart to take the double podium. If not the puncture, maybe Ralph Schumacher would have scored a victory. But this race had a lot of changing leaders, who may say the same. Mika Hakkinen, despite all the troubles, made what mattered for him the most. He reduced the gap to Ivine, these last laps of the race were clinical. Brilliant result for Marc Genet as he takes 6th place and 8 points. Eddie Ivine is just 7th, but he's still ahead in the main medal. Zonta has finished 8th, Panitz 9th, and Villeneuve has completed top 10 despite DNF. 17 points are separating Ivine and Hakkinen. With two races to go, it's still unclear who is going to be world champion. Franzen and Kulhut are still mathematically in the contention, but today's DNF really hurt their chances, and most likely they'll battle for the third position. Jano truly has climbed from podium straight into top 10, with only point behind Salo and one ahead of Hill. Main hero of the race is Johnny Habit, now four positions up to 13th place. Janek has also noticeably improved, and Ricardo Zonto overtook Vilnov in the battle of two BARs. Ferrari is leading, but the gap is just 8 points, meaning that the battle for Constructs' championship is even more close. Stewart's double podium has allowed him to jump and fly away from Benetton. They are 24 points ahead of Sky Blue and 25 points behind Williams. The Aeros has dropped two positions down. This was a race to remember. A Grand Prix of such magnitude that one country wasn't enough to host it. We have needed the whole continent. Thank you for watching and remember that in three weeks we are meeting for the first time in Malaysia. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today Formula 1 for the first time comes to Malaysia. Let's do our usual routine and take a look at the order of the starting grid. Row 11th consists of Toro Takagi on Eros and Minari's Luca Badoe. Their teammates, Pedro Del Rosa and Max Gené, have taken row 10th. Right next is Jan Trullo and Prost, and Brazilian driver Pedro Diniz is 17th. Alex Zanardo Williams has qualified 16th, 
and alongside him is Gianna Lazio and Zauber. After taking a pole position in the previous qualification, Frensen is just 14th, Riccardo Zonton BAR 13th. Olivier Panis takes 12th place and Benetton's Fisichella is 11th. Despite being one row down, world champions duo Villeneuve and Hill remains intact. Ralph Schumacher qualified 8th and Alex Woods and Benetton took 7th place. Stewart is riding high after triumphant European Grand Prix, as Barrichello and Herbert are on 3rd row. McLaren drivers are both in 2nd row, Kulhan managed to make score 3-12 against Hakkinen. Eddie Eva qualified 2nd and what a comeback by Michael Schumacher, he was eager to unleash his pace and took the pole position. Lights out and race begins. Hakkinen did it started great, but both Ferraris and McLarens have managed to retain their starting positions. 17 points difference between Hakkinen and Ivine makes it possible that the Northern Irishman may become a champion today. Meanwhile, Stewart's duo has been split by Alex Woods and Ralph Schumacher efforts. Physical and Hill had a contact, which forced Damon to retire from the race. He now only has Suzuka left before his retirement from Formula 1. As he has promised during yesterday's qualification press conference, Michael Schumacher allows Eddie Irvine to pass him with no issues. Team strategy is in priority. While Schumacher's goal for now was to hold both McLarens behind, David Coulthard has a different opinion on it and managed to quickly pass two-time world champion during the following lap. The battle for constructors and world championship is on. But on lap 15, Coulthard's car has stopped. Ferrari has all the momentum now. Race leader Eddie Ivine is going to the pit stop. He's the first one from the leading drivers to do so. Unlike Norbert Ring's misfortune, all goes smooth and he's back on track on third place, close to Mika Hakkinen, who is still due to a pit stop. Villeneuve was putting pressure on Wurz, but got carried away and did several spins before catching the car back on track. Mika Hakkinen is in for his second pit stop. Eddie Ivine, who has already was there twice, easily passes Mika. And not only him, since Johnny Herbert and Stewart has moved to third place. With three laps to go, Ferrari makes a team order, so that Michael Schumacher allows Eddie Ivan to pass him again. Such points advantage would be more than enough, even if Hakkinen passes Herbert. Mika is doing just that in the following lap, but it seems that it's too late now. And just like that, the Northern Irishman Eddie Ivan is the Formula 1 1999 world champion. Ferrari makes a double as race went perfect for them. Team orders or not, Ivan can finally celebrate. It happened, ladies and gentlemen. We have got a new world champion crown today. Eddie Ivan won both the title and the race. Michael Schumacher's comeback was probably one of the key factors for it to happen. McLaren's strategy certainly didn't work how it was expected. Mika fought till the end, but third place was his maximum today. Stewart drivers Hebert and Barrichello have once again made a strong showing, finishing 4th and 5th respectively. Frenson is 6th, Alaise is 7th, Woods on Benetton 8th, Genet has once again scored points for Minardi, and Zenati has closed the top 10. Fastest lap has been set by Michael Schumacher, and since he has finished second, he takes an extra point as well. Twenty-seven points distance between Ivan and Hakkinen, with one race to go, means that there are no mathematical chances. Even if Eddie doesn't finish and Mika wins with taking the fastest lap, there still will be one single point between the two. There are no changes at all in top 11th, but right next is Johnny Habit, after two fantastic races, is just three points behind the 9th place. Alex Woods dropped to 13th place and John Lazy has passed Marc Genet for 16th place. Constructors Championship still in contention, but Ferrari is 37 points ahead of McLaren, so team from Maranello is a huge favorite. After what may feel is a season-long battle for fourth place between Williams and Benetton, suddenly Stewart has entered the room and is only four points behind Williams. Suzuka's race will give us all the answers for remaining questions. This was Malaysian Grand Prix, first of many in years to come. Once again, congratulations to Eddie Ivan for becoming 1999 Formula 1 world champion. But as we remember, it's still not the end. See you in two weeks at Suzuka. So long, everybody. Welcome, everyone. The final 16th race of the 1999 season has arrived. Today, we're in Japan at Suzuka Circuit. 
and it's time to go through the starting grid. Row 11th opens with Luca Pedoia. Alongside him is Pedro de la Rosa on arrows. Row 10th has the same pattern. Is Minardis Jeunet 20th and homegrown driver Toro Takage is 19th. Ricardo Zonto on BAR is 18th and Pedro Diniz qualifies 17th for the second consecutive time. The last race is applicable to Alex Zanardi, as he is again 16th. Alex Woods has qualified 15th. His teammate Giancarlo Fisichelli is 14th and Rubens Barrichello and Stewart 13th. Three occasions in a row world champions Hill and Villeneuve have qualified alongside, this time the Canadian was faster. Gianna Lacy has taken 10th place, Ralph Schumacher and Williams is 9th. Johnny Hubbard is in great shape and will start 8th. Jan Trulli has qualified 7th. But he isn't the fastest Prost, as Panis is 6th, newly crowned world champion at Ewine 5th. Frenzen on Jordan 4th, David Coulthard has qualified 9 times at 3rd position this season. Mika Hakkinen is 2nd. This statement works in multiple ways, and Michael Schumacher has taken another pole position back to back. We're seconds away from the race to start, and lights are out. Japanese Grand Prix takes underway. Mika Hakkinen's reaction was perfect as he instantly moves up to the first place. Schumacher changes trajectory, but Mika is already approaching the first corner. Olivia Panis has climbed up three positions and joined the top three. Ralph Schumacher and Gianna Lazy have to get a pass here on Trulli and Johnny Herbert. Besides Zanardi, everyone else remains in the race. Trulli's car has stopped. It marks the end of his tenure at Prost, as in the next season he is going to Jordan. David Coulthard is behind Eddie Evine, but another McLaren and Mika Hakkinen has already stoned away from new world champion. Probably Eddie has celebrated really well, as Hakkinen is much more quicker than Evine right now. Giancarlo Fisichella tries to overtake Taranasuke Takagi and Supertech's engine seems to be faster than Yamaha's. The Italian moves to 18th place. Today is not only the last race of the season, but also the last Formula 1 Grand Prix for Damon Hill. Things are not going smoothly for the Englishman, as he finds himself driving off the track. 96 world champion manages to get back, but seems that car is damaged, and Hill's chances to score some extra points to get into season's top 10 are getting lower and lower. Both Pedro de la Rosa and Giancarlo Fisichella have easily passed Hill, dropping him to 18th place. Eddie Jordan is visibly upset, he wished a better career adding for Damon. It's time for the pit stop in McLaren's garage. Mika Hakkinen has managed to build such a huge gap that only Ferrari's Michael Schumacher remains relatively close. Despite losing the championship to Ivan, Hakkinen shows his determination to win today and his desire to finish the season on a high note. Schumacher has indeed passed Mika, but Michael is the only one to do so, meaning that Hakkinen returns to the track second. Soon after Michael Schumacher goes to pit lane himself. Overcut wasn't realistic, but at least Michael was trying to reduce the gap to Mika. Only both Ferraris and David Coulthard haven't visited pit stop before this lap. Crew did a good job, but considering Hakkinen's pace today and the gap that he had on Michael before his own pit stop, it's no surprise that the Finnish driver has reclaimed the lead. Still, Schumacher goes back into the chase, but it looks like that the only driver that can prevent Hakkinen from winning today is Mika himself. David Coulthard has damaged his front wing and is drastically losing time. He has to go to pits to fix it, but his chances for podium have went nowhere. And after one pit stop and six laps of struggling, David Coulthard goes back to McLaren's garage for good, to retire from the race. Several laps have passed and now it's Taranasuke Takagi and Eros who has to retire from the race. Japanese driver is leaving Formula 1 on his home soil. Large clouds of smoke are appearing on track. Supertech engine wasn't reliable for Giancarlo Fisichella, as he has to finish his season parking near the barricade. This race was a pure example of how fast Mika Hakkinen was this season. But the Finnish driver was able to convert 11 pole positions just into 5 victories. Mika wins today's race, so there is something to celebrate for McLaren's crew and fans, but overall the feeling that this car was capable of winning more won't go away. In different reality, Hakkinen may have won the season, but it turned out to be Eddie Evine's time. He is the 1999 world champion. Mika Hakkinen wins the Japanese Grand Prix. Finnish driver was able to finish the season on a high note, but the ones who will celebrate the most are Ferrari fans. Michael Schumacher is second, with 5 seconds behind, but Eddie Evine is third, 
with 1 minute and 35 seconds cap from Hakkinen. Frensen took 4th place, Ralf Schumacher has finished 5th, Jean Lazy 6th, 2 Stewart Sands again in points, Herbert 7th, Brugel 8th, Jacques Villeneuve has added 2 points and Alex Woods took 10th place. Michael Schumacher once again set the fastest lap of the race, adding an extra point to his tally. Final standings. Eddie Ivan is the world champion with 17 points advantage on Mink Hakkinen. Heinz Hall Frensen took well deserved third place. Kuhut fourth, Ralph Schumacher has retained fifth place. His brother Michael, despite missing a lot of races, is just three points behind at six. Soon to be Michael's teammate in Ferrari, Rubens Barrichello, took seventh place. Fisichella eighth, Johnny Habit's magnificent span of last three races allowed him to move to ninth place, and Mika Salo, being the only driver who participated for two different teams, managed to keep tenth place. Alesi climbed up two positions, and the same is applicable to Jacques Villeneuve. Next year, surely must be better for 97 world champion. Scuderia Ferrari decisively wins the Constructors' Championship. McLaren is second, Jordan took third place, Williams managed to retain fourth position, but Stewart was really close. Benton slowed down a lot in the second part of the season, they're sixth, Prost seventh, Zaube eighth, Minardi retained ninth place, BAR tenth, and Eros finished last. The 50th season of Formula 1 has become a part of the history. Maybe someday the future generations will get back to revisit it, but for now it's time to focus on what is next. Year 2000 is approaching, and I really hope that no kind of problems will prevent us to see it together. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon again.